don't have what I do have in front of me is Mr. Matt Cardle. And I have to say, sometimes when I'm walking through London mm -hmm. and uh, I'm coming to work, and you know the way you, you sort of look at people and go, he looks a bit cool. Yeah. I, I wish, you know, why could I not wake up in the morning and just throw something together and look as cool? Now, you just look like... You look like you could be driving a convertible through Havana. You look like you could maybe, you know, own a bar in Camden. You've got something going on there with that. Talk us through the look because you, it's very you, cool. Patrick, are you trying to tell me I look like a bit of a plum, but in a nice way? A bit of a what? Plum. No, no, I, I actually think, I mean, I mean, it, it's, it's a, just it's just All Saints. I'll drop that name if you want. Oh, all it's very yeah. cool. It's flowery. It's, it's the only flowery thing I have. No, but you've got the sleeve of tats going on as well. Oh, which it's all so it's all so planned, mate. No, I I can't take that. I have to say, congratulations on that. <laughs> congratulations on the new show. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. West End debut. Mm. Um, so obviously, uh, a lot of listeners out there know you from X Factor, know you as a singer. Mm -hmm. This is a huge departure for you. Talk us through how you got from there to to taking over a major role in the West End. Wow, um, it really came out of nowhere. Um, I was in the studio recording some vocals for my new album, uh, which is number four, coming out in October. Um, and my manager called me and said, I've just had Beverly Knight on the phone. They're looking for a new Huey Calhoun for Memphis. And I was like, OK, great. Why do I need to know about this? And, um, that, you know, she's interested in you coming down and, and trying it out. And I was like, well, at least seeing the show to start with. So, so I was like, I just was honoured that she'd thought of me in any capacity, do you know what I mean, um, acting, singing, whatever, or even just invite me down to come see the show, amazing. So I went down, saw the show, like everybody who sees it, fell in love with it completely. Um, because it, it's a brilliant show. It is amazing, and I feel like a bit of a, you know, it's a bit it's a bit odd me being in it and saying how good it is, but I would say that had I not got the role, it is an incredible show. Well, hang on, what we can do, we can do completely independent. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil, our producer, mm -hmm. uh, his other half went to see the show went back and saw it twice. So so you don't have to say how good it is because independent people have said it's brilliant. Well, there you go. And I, I've, I've... Oh, God, I've, I've seen it 30 times now. <laughs> well, hang I'm on. Sure if, you're sit, if you're sitting there, right, and you know this is a big hit show uh -huh. and you haven't acted before, mm. you're sitting there, is there a point where you're going, wow, this is exciting, I want to be in it? Or is there a point, you know, where your backside kind of goes, ooh, this is a bit scary. Oh, a healthy mix of both, Patrick. A, a healthy mix of both. You know, I watched the show. Uh, initially, I was just blown away by Beverly Knight's voice. You know, I've seen her in concert before and I've got albums and it, is, there's it, nothing that compares to up close and personal like that. Is she not the the best? I, I think she is the best soul singer that we have. She's, in, she's one of the best in the world, but she's yeah. definitely the best soul singer we have on this side of the Atlantic. Without a shadow of doubt. Without a shadow of doubt. And she's just getting better and better and better as she goes along her career. You know? Yeah, like um, I've been lucky enough to do to do gigs and, and bring her on. And, mm -hmm. and until you actually see her up close... Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just what something... What she does is unbelievable. Yeah, it's something to behold, it really is. And the first time I went into an audition room with her and she was sat down, she came in with her coffee and I was like, oh, God, Beverly's here now, Ooh, pressure's on. And then she got up and started singing at me. I literally turned into dust on the floor. I was like, can you... Oh, I was like, I need to get over this really, really quickly, otherwise, I, I know, I don't know how I'm going to rehearse with this lady, you know. But there we go. But but obviously you've got you know a hell of a set of pipes on you as well. Oh thank you kindly. Um, thanks kindly. Um, it's, thank you kindly. Um, I, do I detect a little bit of a southern accent there? <laughs> Honestly, I'm one of those guys now. No. <laughs> no. Well, 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 hang hang on because no. tell us a little bit about about the play because obviously the singing in it you're you're mm -hmm. playing a part. I'm assuming there's an accent with the role as well. Yes, there is. I mean, it's set in Memphis in the 50s, so deep south, um, and you know uh, the segregation is still in full swing between blacks and whites and um, I play a wannabe radio DJ Huey Calhoun who um, who you know spends his time but he shouldn't but he spends his time down on Beale Street and in the bars and in the in the blues bars and he falls in love with Felicia Farrell who are played by Beverly Knight um, and then embarks on a, on a mission to make her famous get the music heard um, it's not totally selfless he, he wants to become famous himself and he does um, along with her what happens along the way is just hilarious and heartbreaking and there's a real you know heavyweight message that runs through the show and the, the most impressive thing for me about the show is how that message is carried throughout yet it's constantly entertaining 
constantly hilarious um, and how they blend the music in as well. But every now and again, you just get stabbed in the heart with the, with the message um, of equality basically that was not there well you know what's interesting you know obviously it's set in in you know the in the deep south it's a period piece so you think mm. to yourself well that was then and then you see the stuff that's going on in america now yeah, and yeah. you see that there's this a lot of stuff it just has not disappeared not and so totally. does, does you know when the audience come to see it does it feel like the show's got more of an edge because it's set set well i get i guess it must do and you know there were there were one or two moments in the show where it really does kind of make you sit up and and you hear a gasp from the audience every now and again when a few things are dropped in it and you're like Phew. You know, and you know, you can feel them coming because you're in the show and you know what's coming and the audience don't. And one minute they've got a smile on their face and the next minute it's like, oh, oh my God, these people are crying. And it's, you know, it's just, it's a, it's an absolute roller coaster of, of emotions in the show, um, on and off stage, you know. And so whenever you, you take over a role like that, you know, you, obviously there's someone in there before you, mm. how much of it, when you go to see it, do you inhabit from their performance or how much do you go, ah, no, I'm going to do this completely differently? Well, it was funny. I went and saw it um, once and I didn't really, stupidly, didn't really focus enough on what Killian was doing. Um, I was looking at the whole show um, and the man is just, Killian Donnelly, he's just gone into kinky boots. The guy is... It, I, I'm assuming that's a show? Yes, yes, okay, showing show the West End kinky I, I, boots. I just thought we were describing what he was doing today. No, 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 no. No, he's he's literally one of the most talented people I've you know I've met recently. He's um, it's just ridiculous, and how he did that for eight months, I do not know. Um, and I went to see it, and then when I went to see the show again to watch Killian, I was just like, oh, I wished he was rubbish, you know. But he was just the total opposite. He was absolutely incredible. And there are things that I've borrowed, things that I've turned my own way, things that I you know have used that. The, from the way Killian was portraying it because there is a certain way that this character is portrayed and there is certain traits about him that are consistent with whoever plays him. Um, what kind of intimidated me slightly about it was when I was talking to Tara, the resident director, she was, the amount of times she'd say, oh, well, this is, you do what you want in this bit. You know, and I'm like, uh, really? Can you just tell me what to do? <laughs> it's like I'd much prefer some instruction, <laughs> some guidance, you know. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of freestyling goes on as well, which is which is fun. Now I get... W which is great, you know, and we've, we, we talked a little bit about the person who was in it before. You talked about Beverly Knight, but obviously, we, you know, we want to concentrate on you because you've got a set of pipes, you're a star in your own right, and you're brilliant as well. And so we're going to listen to this. This is uh, Hit My Heart. We've played a bit of this on Radio 2. Mm -hmm. It's gone down very, very well. Thank you. So we'll play a little bit about this. You see, never mind the other ones, that's what you can do. Come on, get in there. <laughs> so that's from the last album. That is, yeah, Porcelain. And you're saying there's another there's another album coming out when? October time. OK, so you just yeah. decided to squeeze it. So what what, what attracted you to, to sort of like back off from, from the singing and just dabble a wee bit in this? Because a lot of people, you know, who've got the singing pipes, they, this is a speaking role, it's, you know, if an actor was going into this and they were having mm -hmm. to do the whole accent thing and learn everything, it's a big challenge. Yeah, well... Well, a lot to bite off for you. Yeah, absolutely. And I, um, <clears throat> I had a conversation with a few people um, when I got offered the role, and I was like, I said to my manager, I was like, Nate, right, we need to just clear up everything that we've got with the album before I can even consider trying to fit this script in my head. Yeah. Get the album in a position where we can leave it alone for a bit, basically. Um, I mean, it's there's the big bulk of it is there already. We we still had another kind of two months to go on writing and recording but this came along and you know it's just such an incredible opportunity to to a try acting b you know work with beverly and the casting company are just incredible people as well so whenever you you know you sit there and it's an american accent that you have to do is, mm -hmm. that, is that something you know that you thought you said hang on no i could give this a go or do they do they send you to a vocal coach or how does it work well i mean i was always um i was always messing around with um uh Accents and stuff like, n funnily enough, Northern Irish is one of the ones that I always used to play. Go on, then give us that one. Um, <laughs> I, can only, no, come on. I can only say the one thing. No, that's all you need to say. Get your knickers down now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the most PC thing, but you know. Uh, to, to, um, be, to be honest with you, I'm, I, I'm, yeah. <laughs> 
It's a good accent. I think that's probably all we can say about that. It's it's a decent accent. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> but you know, so I was always messing around with accents and things like that. And American was one that I could could do. Um, Did you have a phrase that you could say in an American accent, Matt, that might be slightly more sort of I radio mean, two than the stuff I, that you I, say I, in the, the other thing of the show? It's like, well, tell you the truth, ma'am, I never had the nerve to come into a club like this before, but I heard you singing, and and I wanted to see if you looked as pretty as you sound. It's, it's I have, you see, that's very good. Bless you. You see, you. that's very good. And so, and so, uh, have people come? Have people said, "Hang on, you know, Matt Park, the singing," you know, we we want to hear more of that. Um, you know, I haven't, um, I haven't had too many people, you know, say anything like that yet. I mean, there's, it's interesting to have my fans come see the show. Yeah, what do they, they make see of that? It? They see that sort of ten percent of me that's serious. Um, on stage when I'm singing my own thing on tour and whatnot, and then the other ninety percent of me is very much like Huey Calhoun, yeah. which is a com, you know a bit of a bumbling idiot at the best of times. So they're like, okay, you know, I've never seen it like that. It's like, well, that's that's kind of like who I am, I guess. And so w when you join a production like this, and then your fans come, uh, your fans are obviously around the stage door, and everybody else's fans because it's open for a while. They're <laughs> they're just not there, so it's all new for everybody. Well, yeah, it's it's very different outside at the moment um, for me. <laughs> you know, outside this than it is outside my show. You know? Yeah, of course. Um, and you're going to be doing some stuff for uh, the BBC in September as well. That's right. Uh, talk us through that. Well, we are doing Proms in the Park. <gasps> which with, with the old Wogan. With the old. Oh, oh, that's an impression Terry. I cannot do. Oh, Sir Terry, there he is. <laughs> it's an old Matt Cardle. Um, and, and that's going to be the full cast? I... I think so. I haven't got the details to hand, um, nor has anyone. There's lots of hands going up in the air. Um, let's just say yes. I always for the moment. Say, always <laughs> say yes. Just yes. You just got. We'll, we'll I'm do a yes, man. We'll do that again. I'll say, and that's obviously going to be the full cast. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's what I thought as well. <laughs> that's what I thought as well. So how long are you going to stay in this then? Well, we are at the Shaftesbury Theatre in the West End until the 31st of October. Um, all the tickets are available at MemphisTheMusical.com. Get one, get five. Come down, come twice. There we go. Get one, uh, get one free. Uh, Matt Carl in Memphis. It is on the Shaftesbury Theatre in London, booking through until the end of October. And uh, this is actually from the show. I listen to advice from folks smarter than me.